Y'all, I'm finally making fat bombs. Come on. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, I'm finally tackling something that you've asked me about so many times, fat bombs. Stay tuned. All right guys, fat bombs. I've finally given in and I'm gonna be testing two recipes for chocolate fat bombs. You guys have asked so many times and fat bombs honestly are just not something that I make. And um, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that, but today we're gonna be doing that. We're concentrating on chocolate salted fat bombs. The first recipe comes from a website called whatgreatgrandmaate.com, great name. And it's chocolate almond butter collagen fat bombs. And the second recipe is from ketogasm.com, and that's keto chocolates with macadamia and sea salt. So we're gonna be testing those today. Now before we begin, I wanna give a huge thank you to Perfect Keto for sponsoring this video. Perfect Keto is one of the most well-respected manufacturers of keto foods and products on the market. And as you know, I've mentioned in several videos, I am particularly fond of several of their products. Number one, their um, whey protein, which I use as a flour substitute. It makes great fluffy baked goods. And probably the most important for me is their Perfect Keto Collagen. It is grass-fed beef, pasture-raised beef collagen. And while I use it as a baking uh, staple, it provides you know, a really chewy texture and things like cookies, um, it also has a benefit for hair, skin, nails, joints, um, I've mentioned this before, I have a bizarre, like, peeling, splitting nails. My mother had it, God rest her soul, uh, her whole life, and I have had it my whole life. And since I've been taking collagen every morning, I've just it's unflavored, you throw it in your coffee, um, there has been a great improvement in that. So there is definitely scientific evidence about the, the hair, skin, and nail benefit of collagen as well as joints. Uh, they claim that there is a benefit for um, fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, as I head into 45 years I old, I sure hope that that's the case, but I don't know, we're gonna find out. So anyway, thank you so much Perfect Keto for sponsoring this video. Now normally um, I have a code, highfalutin15, that gets you 15% off of all of their products, and that will always work, but right now, through Valentine's Day, I believe it's actually through February 15th, 2020, you can buy one item and get a second item for 40% off. So if you wanna try the Huawei uh, and the collagen, you can buy one item, get one for 40% off. There's gonna be a code down here on the screen, but don't worry, it's also in a link in the video description below and in the pinned comment down below. So you can use that to buy one item, get one item for 40% off. So thank you Perfect Keto for sponsoring this video. It's sponsorships like these that help keep our channels on the air and I'm really appreciative. So if you wanna support me, go check out perfectketo.com and use the codes listed below. All right, let's make some fat bombs. All right, so let's start with our very first recipe. This is chocolate almond butter collagen fat bombs by whatgreatgrandma8.com. I love that name. Um, and this is pretty straightforward. It's some coconut oil, some coconut butter, which is different than coconut oil, so be sure to look at the coconut butter. Um, and then some almond butter, cocoa powder, and the things that you would expect in a chocolate fat bomb. Um, what makes this special is the collagen addition. She adds the collagen in there uh, because it adds a protein boost, but also the benefits that you get basically from drinking bone broth, but you also get it in a dried product that you can add into a recipe. All right, so we're gonna start here and just over a medium low heat, we're gonna melt some of our ingredients. And um, again, this is, uh, these are not my recipes. We're just here to test them. So as you know, I do not give exact ingredients. I want you to go to the link down here on the screen and in the video description below for exact measurements for all of these. The people that did create these recipes, they deserve the traffic. So I'm gonna send you to their websites to get all the ingredients. But for now, what we're gonna do is just start melting all of this in a small saucepan. And we're gonna start with hardened coconut oil. And in that goes, and it's not gonna take long for this stuff to start melting. Second ingredient is the coconut butter. Coconut butter, this is a different texture than coconut oil. Yes, it has a little bit of coconut oil in it, but it is a much more potent uh, coconut flavor, and I love it. Um, it is kind of difficult to find sometimes though, so you may have to go to a specialty food store or order that online. So coconut oil and coconut butter. Also, we're going to add almond butter. And this is just plain almond butter. And um, I'm gonna tell you that um, Perfect Keto also makes nut butters uh, that have flavorings in them. <laughs> they are 
insanely delicious. I'm not even joking. They, they come in little pouches and I'm not using this here because as you know, I test recipes exactly as written. That's the only way to be fair. Um, but uh, they have nut butters that are keto nut butters that I love, like Snickerdoodle and Macadamia Vanilla and some other wonderful flavors that I bet you would be fantastic in this. But um, we're just keeping things as, as fair as possible. I'm following the recipes exactly as written and I'm just using plain unsweetened um, uh, almond butter. So, all right, let's just bring this uh, up to temperature and let this melt for a minute. Not going to take long at all. Okay, I'm going to switch to a whisk just to make sure we're about to add all this dry ingredients into this, all this oil and butters, and you want to make sure you're getting a good mix on it. I like a little, I get more questions about this little whisk right here. It's just a little spiral whisk, super cheap thing. I'll leave a link to it down below if you want to buy one um, and try it out. But it lets you get into the corners of a small pot like this where, you know, a balloon whisk you couldn't really get into the corners. So once this is melted, we're going to start adding in our dry ingredients. We're actually going to start with a little bit of vanilla extract um, right into this, first of all, though. Ooh! The alcohol in that vanilla extract let that bubble up real quick. All right, I'm going to turn this down, way down. Might be getting a little too hot on us. Now we're going to add cocoa powder. This is unsweetened cocoa powder. And in that goes, make sure you get it all out of there. Don't want to waste anything. Okay. And this is going to give us our chocolate, chocolatey, chocolatey flavor. And now in goes the collagen. And this is unflavored uh, beef, grass-fed beef collagen, right? Now, Perfect Keto makes some really delicious flavored I mean, this one here is, this is what I'm using. I, don't, I want to keep stirring this. This is what I'm using here. It's the unflavored. And this is the easiest to work with. Like it can work in savory or sweet goods because there's no flavoring. There's no sweeteners or anything like that. They do make, like if you're just taking the collagen for, uh, in your coffee or whatever, they make flavors like chocolate that is fantastic, that has stevia in it. Um, I think it's stevia. Yeah, uh, stevia extract in it. And um, it's chocolatey and wonderful. And I'm sure... You could probably omit the sweeteners in this recipe and just use the chocolate collagen. But again, I'm following the recipe exactly as written and I'm just using unflavored collagen. But I am gonna add a sweetener to this. She said it's optional. I, while I like dark chocolate, I do like a sweetener in some dark chocolate. This is just powdered erythritol. This is confectioner's swerve. And I think it's important probably that, unless you're using liquid stevia or something like that, the granulated sweeteners, tend to stay kind of grainy. So I think it would be important to use a powdered sweetener, which is what I've done here. And lastly into this, we're gonna add just a little bit of sea salt. And her recipe calls for adding the sea salt into the chocolate. The other recipe, as you're gonna find out, we sprinkle like flaky sea salt on top. So we'll just see how those compare. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna take this off the heat. And I think, this is going into a little silicone mold, right? Just one of these little things. And look how cute that is. Um, I'll leave a link down there to that below. Um, but since it's Valentine's, we're making hearts out of it, right? I think it's gonna be easier for me to pour this into, get off there. To pour this into a uh, measuring cup and then I can use the spout to add this into the little heart wells. So we're just gonna do this. So, I mean, that couldn't have been any easier or faster. Hello, easy peasy, melting some oils. Now these are gonna set up in the freezer. Both of these recipes call for putting them in the freezer to set up. As you know, coconut oil varies in consistency based on its temperature. And um, so you wanna store these probably in the freezer or in the refrigerator. Now I'm just gonna fill this little guy up here and in the freezer they go for 20 minutes. All right, so I can already tell those are gonna be delicious. Um, I've used about half of uh, what I made here, half of the recipe, and I've only got two of these little heart molds, so I wanna save the other heart mold for 
um, the other recipe. What you can also do, she said, if you don't want to use silicone molds, is to just pour this in a pan, uh, pour it in a pan, a square pan, and put it in the freezer, and then when it's turned solid, cut that into squares and pull that out, so you just have little square chocolates. But it's Valentine's Day, so we're using the little hearts. So I put it on, I forgot to put it on a baking pan. I think that's just easier to manipulate and get it in the oven, I mean, get it in the freezer. So in the freezer, this goes for 20 minutes. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna clean up and get ready for the next recipe. So I'll meet you right back here. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we're back to start on our second recipe. The first recipe is in the freezer setting up. Uh, I don't think they need to be stored permanently in the freezer. I do think they probably would work out best stored in the fridge, but you want to store it in the freezer. You want to set it up in the freezer so that you can take them out of the mold fairly quickly. It's about 20 minutes. Now, our second recipe is keto chocolates with macadamia and sea salt, and that is by ketogasm.com. We're family friendly around here. That's just the name of the site. Again, check out all the recipes down here using the links down here below on, on the screen and in the video description below. And this has even less ingredients than the first recipe. So we're starting again with a small saucepan, and I know a lot of you, uh, some, some of you said in my last couple of videos that uh, it sounds like there's a static in, in my microphone. I'm pretty sure that's the um, this uh, induction burner. I'm uh, much closer to it in my new kitchen than I was in my older kitchen, so I think it's just picking up that's what you're hearing. So we're going to start with coconut oil, and this is considerably more, as you can tell, than our other recipe. And so this is just going to start melting on um, very low heat. This just makes a much... It's, um, it has few, fewer ingredients, but it makes much, many more. Like the other recipe was for 12. I said it makes 12 uh, candies. This makes 30. Um, granted, her mold looked like it was a little smaller. It wasn't a heart. They were little, like little gumdrop shapes. But this just seems to make a lot more than the other recipe. So in this goes, and just going to melt this down. And then we're going to add in our uh, cocoa powder. We're also going to use a sweetener in this. The other one said sweetener was optional, but I did add it. Like I said, I used a, a confectioner's powdered erythritol blend, which was Swerve. For this one, she called for granulated stevia. Um, the brand she used was actually a stevia erythritol blend. But she specifically said, if you don't like stevia, you can also use monk fruit or erythritol. So to keep things, to keep the, the match even here, I'm going to just stick with my... Um, confectioner swerve for this recipe as well. Uh, I think it'll just blend and melt easily. And we don't have the difference in the, the sweeteners to have to contend with as far as comparisons. So this is a fair amount of cocoa powder. And in this goes, ooh, it's powdery. Make sure you, again, you get it all out of there. This is unsweetened cocoa powder. Because, um, you know, these aren't, like I said, I don't think these are chocolates that are going to stay shelf stable on the counter. They might, but both of them are mostly fat, right? These are fat bombs and fat can go rancid pretty quickly. So I think that we want to keep them in the fridge. We're going to find out though. All right, so here's my sweetener. And that is it. I mean, I don't know how much easier you can get than that. Yet again, I think it's going to be easiest to fill this by pouring it into the molds from a measuring cup. So let me get all of this out of here. I think her recipe specifically said to spoon it into your molds. So if that's easier for you, you do that. I think it's easier for me to pour it. This one is much thinner consistency. It doesn't have that collagen in it. It doesn't have that, um, ooh, doesn't have that collagen. In it. it doesn't have the almond butter in it. So it's a little thinner consistency. Um, and now we're going to add some chopped nuts to this. So I'm just going to roughly chop some macadamia nuts and we're not going to add them at the beginning because if you do, they'll sink to the bottom of the mold. So what we're going to do, I'll tell you here in a minute. Hold on. Okay, I learned my lesson last time. So these are coming out of the freezer. This is, um, they're just on a little sheet pan. These are not set up yet, uh, but I just want to use the same pan. So let's just fill this. Fill it about three quarters of the way full. Don't fill it all the way full, otherwise you don't have room for your nuts in there, right? So uh, that's going to take up some space. So in these go, about three quarters full. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'm gonna throw this in the freezer and then in a few minutes when this becomes a jelly, gel-like consistency, we're just gonna come back in and poke some of our roughly chopped nuts down into each one of those to fill it up uh, and then we'll let them fully set up and come taste those. I'll show you what I'm doing here, but I'll meet you back here in just a few minutes, all right? Stay tuned. A few moments later. All right, guys, we are back now. Um, these have been in the freezer for about 20 minutes. So um, I don't know if you saw the time lapse earlier. I did exactly what the recipe said not to do. She said, don't let these get too hard. Um, that needs to be a gel-like consistency. If they get too hard, you can't stick the nuts down in it. Well, doggone if I didn't do exactly that. And now we're only, they were only in there for 10 minutes um, and they just got way too hard. I threw the little, the whole silicone mold in the microwave for 30, 45 seconds and soften them up and, and tried to stick the, um, <clears throat> the nuts down in there. Uh, this one was missing a little bit of chocolate, but uh, so we're gonna see if that worked out. Now again, these probably don't need to live in the freezer, and, but they, they definitely need to set up in the freezer. So let's just see if we can get these out. This is our other recipe here. And this is cool, that's not hot at all. Um, so let's see what we can do. Let's try to get these out of here, all right? Oh my gosh, they look great. That is so cute. Hold on, I got chocolate on every part of my body. All right, while I'm taking these out of here, um, so you guys have asked about fat bombs for a while. And I'll be very honest with you, these are the first fat bombs, official fat bombs that I have ever made in three years on this channel or just in personal life. Um, a lot of people love fat bombs because they provide a little sweet bite. Most of them are, most fat bombs are sweet. There are some savory ones, but most of them are sweet and they help you supplement um, your fat macros for the day. Um, and they sort of help you, you know, give you a little bit of that sweet taste and bite. It scares me because fat bombs are so calorically dense and because I know that I have portion control issues and all that stuff, cravings, I'm scared, I've always been scared that fat bombs were going to cause me to just, I mean like each one of these little boogers is high in calories and fat and that's the last thing I really need. I mean, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm living proof that you can eat too many calories on low carb and keto and still gain weight or not lose weight. And, I'm just have been scared of them. But for a lot of people, these are a staple in their diet and they love fat bombs. They can control themselves around it. So I'm, I'm excited to see how this turns out for me. Um, now this is the, look how beautiful those are. I mean, my gosh, I don't, I hope that, I hope that will, let me try to focus on it. Hold on. Looky, 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 cookie. That is so beautiful. These have still, we gotta add the salt to them, right? So it says that after you take them out, let them sit on the plate come to room temperature and kind of get sweaty. They're gonna get a little bit sweaty. And then you're gonna dust them with your sea salt because otherwise the salt's just gonna fall off, right? It needs to be a little bit wet. So that's what we're gonna do with those. And so my point here is that if you like fat bombs, let me know down below. Do you eat fat bombs? Are you, I mean, is that a staple in your diet? And if so, how does that help you? Um, I'm, I'm very curious about it. I've steered clear of them uh, because of the calories particularly. So I'm just curious about it. Now, the rest of the recipes, <coughs> these are kind of hard to get out. The rest of these recipes, you know, we, if you were just making one of these, it would probably fill up both of these molds, um, which are just cheap little silicone heart molds. Um, but I poured the rest of it in some little glass dishes and uh, we'll cut those right later and make just squares out of them. But for today's Valentine's recipe. If you want to make some sweets for your sweetie for Valentine's, um, this is a great way to do it and stay on track with keto and low carb. So, get out of the way. Look at how beautiful these are. 
I'm very curious to see how this, as you know, this recipe was the first recipe by um, what great grandma ate and had a lot more, the salt is already in there. They had a lot more ingredients than the other recipe. These had um, almond butter, coconut butter, the collagen, some stuff to sort of fight back. These are literally just pure coconut oil and some sweetener and some cocoa, but it does have nuts in it. So, all right, I'm gonna let these sit and kind of get, come to temp, room temperature a bit, and then I'm gonna salt these, and then we're gonna taste them. So I will be back here, look at my hands, in five, four, three, two, one. <gasps> okay, we're back. It's been about 10 minutes since we, I have cleaned up a little bit, um, and I've, I'm, tr I'm trying to stick the salt onto these. Obviously, she said that you wanna let them get a little moist, so that the salt actually sticks to them. And I am having to press a little bit, but I gotta tell you, I love salted chocolates. Salted chocolate is one of my favorite flavors. And I splurged, I bought the expensive Malden sea salt. Whoo, Lord, it's about $7 for a little tiny bit of salt, but it's pretty and it's good. So I'm gonna stick these on there. See, if you just sprinkle it on there, they're gonna fall off. It doesn't hang on. So you kinda need to press it on there. And I've waited long enough, I can't wait any longer to try these. So as I don't know if you can tell the color difference here, but these are a little bit lighter. Those are the ones that had the coconut butter and the almond butter and the collagen in them. And these are much darker. It's just cocoa, coconut oil, and macadamia nuts and some sweetener. So um, I'm kind of a sucker for some milk chocolate flavor. But we're going to test them and see what we think about it. So let's do that. These, if you remember, are also salted chocolates, but they have the salt in the, in the recipe, right? So there are, it's already included in there. So let's try these. Um, first, let's talk about macros because these are fat bombs. That's the whole reason you make them is to augment your fat macros for the day and as well give yourself a little bit of of, of sweet sweetness. And I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you the, the macros that they have given on their printed recipes. There are so many variables here. I'm usually very exacting about my, I wanna be exact about the macros because that's important. But there are so many variables here. The recipes are different sizes. They have both, one called for 30 pieces of chocolate, one called for 12 pieces of chocolate. Neither one of those fit my molds. What size molds are you gonna use? If you're gonna put it in a pan, how big are you cutting them? So honestly, the best thing to do is just to add up all the macros for each of these recipes and divide it by how many servings you think you can get out of that. But for now, I'm gonna give you the macros that they have printed. So this is the chocolate almond butter collagen fat bombs. This is by what great grandma ate. And one serving is one fat bomb and you're supposed to get 30 fat bombs out of this. Um, I didn't really get that many out of that. But one of these, if you make 30 out of the recipe, is 67 calories, you've got one gram of carbohydrates, you've got two grams of protein, and fat, you've got six grams of fat and one gram of fiber. Now, this second recipe here is keto chocolates with macadamia and sea salt, and this is by ketogasm.com. She says that you're supposed to make 12 pieces out of this. This is obviously more than 12, and I still had some left over that I put in a smaller bowl. So her molds that she used for hers were obviously larger than what we're using here. But if you make 12 servings out of this, one is 120 calories, one gram of carbohydrates, 13 grams of fat, and no protein. All right, so let's just see what we come up with. I'm gonna try the first one we made. These are the ones that had the almond butter and other things in them, and they are so cute. I, I don't think the camera's focusing on them, but. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Sweet, salty. Fatty. Those are pretty good. Those are really good. And they're so pretty. <laughs> okay, let's try the ones with the sea salt on top. I may have put a little too much sea salt, but uh, you can't really have any. That's no such thing. These are much darker. Mm, you see that nut in there? That big old macadamia. Mm -hmm. 
Mmm. Mmm. They make a mess on your fingers. Okay, hold on. Both of those are freaking fantastic. And as I, as I know, it's gonna be hard for me not to eat more than one or two of these. They are that good, but doggone. Okay. I would tie these. Now, if it weren't for the macadamia nut in this, this would be much better. The macadamia nut really, and the crunchy sea salt, really makes this over the top. However, you know that I don't, uh, I usually try to fiddle with some recipes after making them a few times. I would make this recipe because this does have almond butter, the coconut butter, the collagen. There's, there's a give, there's something pushing back against you, right? It's not just fat and sweetener and cocoa. That has substance to it. There's something else in there. If I were to do this again, I would use this recipe and put a, and use the sea salt on top and also put the macadam chopped macadamia nuts in that. If you took the two things that are great about this, the sea salt and the macadamia nuts, is what I'm saying, and supplemented this recipe with that, dangerous, dangerously good. So that's my verdict. These are both fantastic. I would combine the recipes. I would use the collagen and the, uh, the almond butter and the coconut butter, make these, add the salt and the macadamia nuts to it. And jeez Louise, this is gonna be good. So there you have it folks, chocolate fat bombs. I finally did it, just for you. So um, I really appreciate that you've come along for the journey on this video. As I say every time, these videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating. And looking in the end of that camera as often as I can helps keep me honest. So I appreciate that you have come along for the journey. I wanna give another huge thank you to my sponsor, Perfect Keto, for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the link below. It's also gonna be on the video description below and in the comments um, to get buy one, get one 40% off. The, my 15% off coupon will always work but for the next few days through Valentine's 2020, you can use that code to really try out a couple of their fantastic products. So be sure to check them out. Thank you so much, Perfect Keto, for sponsoring. Uh, sponsorships like yours keep all of our channels online, and I really appreciate your support. Uh, if you don't know what Patreon is, be sure to check out my Patreon account. Um, think of it as a tip jar for the internet. It allows people like you who enjoy what people like me do here on the internet and you give me a dollar or two a month just to sort of keep the train on the tracks. There's some personalized content over there and I'm going to be listing all of my Patreon sponsors here on the screen. So otherwise, I love you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Give your sweetie some sweets and I will see you very soon. All right. Bye-bye.